Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Jean-Benet Del Calo. <laughs> How are you? Jacob from Matera. Hey, hey. Danny Dubs, Trainer Brothers, welcome. Good to see you guys. How you doing, buddy? I'm great. How are you? Good. Yeah, got a little, a little tickle in my throat, so I'm going to try to work through that and hopefully not be a disturbance for everybody. All right. You know what that you, tackle's from? Yeah, I got an idea. You were up in New York City yesterday sucking off every guy you walked past. <laughs> I, I was with him. It's what he was doing. It was I his should have called in sick. <laughs> yeah, you didn't post any pictures with the naked cowboy. So, <laughs> no, yeah, well. were you even sucking off guys? Jake, he passed away last summer. He did. He did. Yeah. Suicide. Should have been. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he might still be kicking. I'm teasing. Oh. I like to make bad jokes like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's just you're spreading misinformation, Michael. Um, Mister Information to you, pal. <laughs> Isn't that fun though, to tell people that other people passed away when they're not really dead? Oh. That is a fun prank to pull. It is. I like that a lot. <laughs> Do it to somebody you work with tomorrow. All right. All right. You are my coworkers. I'm talking to Jake because I know yeah. you're going to sleep until 5 p.m. <laughs> Jake, who's somebody you really dislike at your job? Oh, I can't get into that. I want to stay gainfully employed. Make up a name and yeah, describe them very well. Franklin. And Franklin looks like a... <laughs> I didn't say anything. Uh, they just look like a human being. Your eyes were saying La Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Is it a woman? Do you work with a, a, um, a bitch? <laughs> they're not a woman. Um, oh, so it's a dick? But the, it, but a yeah. A prick, even? I would, I, I think bitch is more accurate. Oh. A male bitch? Ugh, oh, that's rough to deal with. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Man, I shouldn't have fucking said anything. Oh, uh, you said it. God damn it. Do you only work with a few people and they all listen to this podcast? I work with two people. And one no. of them, no. <laughs> <laughs> the one he's talking about is clearly... It's this podcast. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jake. Well, you hate him on your own time, brother. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Man, hell of you... a setup on that one. <laughs> Boys, you ready to flip that fucking coin to find out who we're doing tonight? Yeah, I really want to talk about the Impractical Jokers tonight. I hope I win that goddamn coin toss. You're never going to win, you fucking dumb bitch. Fuck! Well, I'm not going to win tonight. You're not going to find love either in your life. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. Jake, that's that another is... fun one to tell somebody you hate. <laughs> Whoa, that's... You hate me? No, I love you so much. I'm okay. right for the soul on that one. I feel terrible because you bought me Burger King last night. <laughs> at the, at the uh, old Turnpike rest stop. Doesn't get better. It's the old country buffets. <laughs> down on his luck, cousin. You guys had a lot of fun at the rest stop together? We did, yeah, Jake. Yeah. What do you think we did there? Yeah. The same kind of stuff the guy that you hate at your work does? No, I didn't say anything about that. I was just... That kind of lifestyle? I'm thinking you guys were maybe splitting an onion ring. A little lady in the tramping. Yeah? Did you guys split an onion ring? We did. Jake, I think Fucking you're peeling back you layers guys. on yourself here. And I think Mike There's would a lot of layers. if you did not call his wife a tramp, honestly. <laughs> All right, boys. <laughs> we have a foot pervert tonight. What? Oh my God. Yep. A murderer foot pervert? Yep. Are you talking Whoa. about Michael? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Trader's in front of us dressed like With weekend his shoes off. <laughs> his nipples are out. I, it's just like when someone's trying to shoot a free throw. That's what's going on. Just a full distraction mode. You got a big Wendy's yeah, for I'm going to get Frosties. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying not to look at him because yeah. he is freezing me out big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the nipples are out, too. Anytime you glance over, he peels it back. You're like, all right. He knows what I want. Even though I'm mouthing, stop doing that. He's still doing it. <laughs> A foot pervert murderer. Wow. Will we know the name? Probably not. Okay. Although he was featured on an episode of Mindhunter. Huh? His name is Jerry Brudos. The foot fetish slayer. Wow. He was also given another nickname, which I hated. It's by an author who, I don't know. He, he took a swing and it's a mess. Dr. She Seuss. took a swing. Ladies write books too. Whoa. I didn't say anything of the contrary. Yeah, you put on a sweatshirt like that and all of a sudden you can tell women what to do with their bodies. <laughs> that sounds like you like the sweatshirt. I do. I love it so much. I want it so bad. I'm so mad when I see you wearing something cool because I'm like, fuck, all I had to do was go on the ACG website and I could have had it first. And then you could have got it uh, price reduced. Yep. 
by chatting, chatting up one of their nice athletes on the on there. The yeah. robots? Yeah, robot athletes. Wow. Mm-hmm. But then I think twice because it's like, all right, I could dress like a dad like I dress now, or I could dress like you, who dresses like a person who received settlement money from their child dying at Disney. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit flashy. <laughs> <laughs> and notice I'm not wearing any crocodile skin because of what happened to my kid. Oh, man. You would make a great dead kid parent. <laughs> it really is the haunted mansion. <laughs> Are we going home sometime soon, Daddy? <laughs> he was so close, I almost had him. Oh, man. That's got to be awful when your kid dies at Disney. How many kids die at Disney? Ooh, buddy, I just know of the one, but I'm sure there's got to be more. Okay. Jake, how many do you think? I'm going to say probably since its existence close to 35 what i was going to say 60 but i'm saying 35 brother that's the tragic kingdom (laughs) i have no knowledge to back this up this is just a guess do they all get swept under the rug because it's never new i feel like it would have to yeah the uh (laughs) the housekeeping from uh fucking beauty and the beast comes out fucking lumiere comes out he's like pulling a dead kid across the fucking (sighs) main street you know somebody for sure has died on the roller coaster there. And, like, the picture gets taken as they're already dead. <laughs> From, like, a heart attack or something? Yeah. So, uh, Disneyland has 25 total deaths. Disney World has 63. I was going to oh. say 65! Damn it! And you would have been over and still wrong, so. Dis- Disneyland actually just had a suicide there the other day. I saw that. Pretty bad one, too. I was waiting for the joke. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the joke was that he implied there's decent suicides. No, nah, but you get sometimes where you're just like, yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. But this one was just like, dude, what the fuck? At Disney. A real motherfucker. Not, not, not quite inside the parking gate. garage. He was on the parking garage. But still, people were leaving the park and coming into the park. And Was it like park. a carbon monoxide thing? Like he hopes? jumped off the parking garage. Oof. Not a ride. That was not the happiest place on earth that day motherfucker was scary poppins what if he had an umbrella in his hand when he did it it was inverted when they found him on the ground <laughs> oh, that's so sad was he a f- ex-employee of disney his father was Ooh. his father was in charge of the musical programming at one point and this motherfucker was a elementary school principal who recently had a domestic incident with his wife oh no and it seems like it's the kind of thing that probably could have gotten resolved over time. Yeah. But he was, he felt ruined, I guess. And he was just like, all right, I'm not doing this. I'm out. Why not just do it at the school? Jake, I don't like the way you think. Like, why go to Disney World, the place where everyone is happy? I think for that reason. He was you, that much of a motherfucker. No, you want to take Disneyland, and not everyone's happy there. Disneyland's got a very different vibe than Disney World. Does it? Have you been to Disneyland? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's much more um, teenagers on ecstasy vibe than than <laughs> Whoa, the uh, really? the family aspect of okay. the world. Jake's in his pocket booking his ticket there now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to Jerry Brutus. Yeah, tell me about this foot pervert. <laughs> Brother, he was born in Webster, South Dakota, which is a real place, Jake. Webster. <laughs> Remember that uh, black midget at Webster? Yeah, how could I forget him? He would come out of the clock. On uh, the show he was on? No, at, at fucking church. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been in church in a while either. He came out of the clock on... You know, Jake, you've never seen the show Webster? No. So it was a show featuring uh, George Karras, who was a former NFL player, and a lady with really bad short hair <laughs> who adopted a little black child who happened to be an adult black midget. Was it Gary Coleman? No. No. Oh. Who was it? They have other ones. Who was it? Emmanuel Lewis. Oh, okay. Michael Jackson. Uh, no, I'm not going to say this. <laughs> no, go say it. You got to say it. He carried him around before he carried Bubbles around. <laughs> Don't say it, Mike. Take it back. Don't say it. I wasn't Are gonna... you trying to take back time and have him not say uh, it? Yeah. That's a Michael Jackson song. Take back time. And have him don't say it. You can th- <laughs> take back time. Parentheses, have him don't say it, featuring. <laughs> it's about loves lost yeah. and children molested. <laughs> it's on the Free Willy soundtrack. <laughs> did he really hang out with Emmanuel Lewis? He did. But he was way older than him, because Emmanuel was a kid during that show. No, brother, I think he was an adult. I don't 
think so. If we could get some fact checking on that. All right. Well, I think Emmanuel Lewis was a, 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 a actual kid. Gary Coleman was playing a child as an adult. Well, Midge. I think people are paying to hear about serial killers, so you can talk about black midgets on your own time. Yeah, All right, I guess I'm gonna have to start a new fucking podcast then. <laughs> yeah, he was a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. <laughs> Do you want to start a new podcast just all about black midgets? <laughs> <laughs> what would you call it, Mike? Little Brothers. <laughs> How fast you had that? <laughs> Brother, I already got three episodes recorded. <laughs> We're sp <laughs> sponsored by Little Manscaped. <laughs> Little Man Manscaped. <laughs> Emmanuel <coughs> Lewis was 12 when he was on the show. Ah, so. all right. Victory. Now tell us about the fucking foot pervert before I <laughs> jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> all right. He was born January 31st, 1939 in South Dakota. His parents uh, were kind of motherfuckers, Henry and Eileen. They had a son before him, a gentleman by the name of Larry, like our dear friend Larry's Backyard Barbecue. When they had Jerry, they wanted a girl. Very disappointed. You rarely hear about that. I think people often want boys. And when they have girls, they put their fists through the drywall. <laughs> Never understood it. Sounds like there's a couple holes in your house. <laughs> there used to be, but then I got a bunch of corn posters to cover them up. <laughs> so, old Eileen was more disappointed than anybody. She really wanted a little girl. And Jerry just didn't cut the mustard with her. You okay, Jake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So they had a farm. They were farmers. So they, they traveled around. Initially, they started off in South Dakota. Then they made their way to Oregon. And then they eventually made their way to California before going back to Oregon. Now, during this time, this little ass boy had a lot of time on his hands. Jake, when he was five, he wandered into a fucking nearby junkyard. What do you think he found there that really caught his eye? A dead dog. Nope. John? <sighs> A sexy goat. <laughs> Closer, a pair of high heels. All right, I was getting there. A goat in high heels is kind of what I was picturing when I said sexy goat. So Jerry came home with, he walked home in these fucking high heels <laughs> as a five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to be upset when that kid comes home in 1945. <laughs> <laughs> he comes home, his mother's fucking furious. His mother is so mad that this little pervert came home in high heels she sets them on fire in front of him. Oh, my God. She could have warned them. Dumb bitch. <laughs> sets them on fire. So this kid's like, all right, I can't wear fucking high heels in front of this bitch, but it's all I want to do now. So the family, I mentioned they moved to California. This was after they were in Oregon. So they go to California. As they're in California, he's getting into school in the first grade. He takes notice that his teacher has two pairs of high heels in the classroom. Then she just keeps in there. She keeps an extra. She wears a pair and she keeps a pair in there. Mm -hmm. So when she's not looking, he sneaks into the closet to steal her extra pair of high heels. Is he wearing them under his desk or is he just trying to take them home? I that think that might have been his plan, but he takes possession of them. And before long, another classmate rats him out. Ooh. So this Fucking motherfucker is... Snitch, dude. Foot snitch. <laughs> It didn't help. He was like tapping his foot and then taking a <laughs> pop quiz. <laughs> so he gets yelled at for that. And again, like his mom fucking reams his ass out because now she's mad because she hates him to begin with. And she's mad because he's clearly got a fucking foot thing. Maybe he just has a shoe thing. So far, it seems like it could just be shoes. But yeah, I'm thinking we're about to take a turn. Can you identify with this guy at all, John? Because you're somewhat of a sneakerhead. Um, sure. Yeah, man. You see some shoes that you want to put on and walk home in. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not uh, a stiletto guy myself, but I can see where he's coming from. All right, I'm glad you can. Now this motherfucker, uh, kind of dumb. He fails second grade, Jake. Oof. And I can somewhat identify because I almost failed first grade. And look at you now. 
<laughs> talking about foot perverts. <laughs> <laughs> He fails second grade, not so much because he's dumb, but because he gets sick pretty often. He contracts measles, and then he has surgery for numerous fungal infections. On his feet? I don't know. That wouldn't make sense. I'm surprised he didn't get hand, foot, and mouth. <clears throat> What's that, a, uh, a Kia song? <laughs> my foot, my neck, <laughs> lick my hand and my mouth. <laughs> That's that song, right, Jake? Yeah, that is right? that song. <laughs> <laughs> you got rhymes today, man. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets all that shit. All right. And the family moves back to Oregon in 1947. Now, at this point, he's eight. He's moving up in the world. So he's not graduating from, but adding to his repertoire of perversions. Okay. What do you think he's getting into now? <clears throat> uh, maybe some leather. Yeah. I was gonna say leather some... daddy stuff. Ooh. Jake, I demand you say something different. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say sandals. Mm -mm. Birkenstocks. <laughs> no, women's underwear. All right. All right. You can see how yeah, it's, those it's, could go together. Up. He becomes so obsessed with women's underwear that he starts befriending boys in the neighborhood who have sisters for the purpose of eventually being able to creep around their house and try on their sister shit and wear their sister shit home. He's trying it on before he takes it home. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't fit right, he's going to take them off and be like, actually, no, nah, I'm not interested. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> I'd like to return these. <laughs> <laughs> now, his brother Larry is quite the little artist. So Larry's become a bit of a hornball himself. Oof. He likes drawing Lois Lane nude. Ooh. Yeah, Superman's girlfriend. It's a good brother to have. Mm-hmm. Brother, when you're that age and you're getting in the nudes, that cum comes out faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they always say. <laughs> Who's they? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got so many drawings and he doesn't want his mother to see them because she's obsessed with sex. Anything related to sex, she's like, no. Oh, like, like religious? Yeah, I don't like that stuff. Yeah. If it's got anything to do with cum, boobies, peepees, buttholes. How, how did they get there? Who? The kids. Buttholes, God puts them there. What are you talking about, the kids? Like, if she's being that strict with the kids, like, if, is that how she is just around the kids? And she's all willy-nilly, all free sex? Jake, I didn't sleep next to the fucking all lady, right. all right, man? God damn. I mean, if, if she's a religious lady in the 40s, that probably means she had sex with her husband twice. Yeah. And he came in her twice and they have two kids. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. Catholics, religious people got to recreate. Now, do you think people that... Procreate. Either way works with me, baby. I, I know where the cum's going. <laughs> Not to the brain. <laughs> <laughs> do you think people who fuck for the... Only for the purpose of procreating do it in any other style other than missionary? I think they're the freakiest, probably. No. No way, because then they would want to do it again tomorrow. But it's also like they're shooting their shot every time. Like, if we're only doing this for the purpose of procreating, I feel like that's going to make you wilder. Hmm. I think the opposite, Jake. I, I think, think so? it's kind of like you have turkey every Thanksgiving. So if you're only fucking once a year, you're having turkey missionary. Dry missionary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no gravy left over. That's insane. I would I would say more it's stuffing, but yeah. With a sick child named Tiny Tim watching the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> God bust all over us, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so his brother Larry is quite the little artist. He's drawing all these disgusting pictures of Lois Lane keeps him in a lockbox and fucking Jerry is picking the lock because he knows they're in there. He's like, man, I'm going to fucking jerk off to these pictures that my brother drew. I'm going to draw some killer Louboutins on Lois. <laughs> <laughs> and as he's picking this fucking lock, his mom catches him. Now they're both in trouble. Fuck. He doesn't rat his brother out. I give him a lot of credit for this. So fucking Jerry blames it all. No, takes the blame for Larry. Wow. So he takes the ass beating from his mother for all these disgusting Superman pictures. Well, yeah, he's going to take the ass beating because he can get better look at her feet. 
Oh, Jake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm saying he's all hunched over her knee. It's a perfect angle. They do say if you want to get into the mind of a foot pervert, you got to be the foot pervert. So I like what you're doing there. Thank you. All right, so we get to 1955. So he's about 16 now. You know what boys do when they're 16, Jake? Oh, yeah. What do they do? Kiss themselves in the mirror. Wait, what? While they're wearing their mother's pantyhose. <laughs> Is that what you were doing, Vermin? No, nah, I wasn't doing that. What were you doing? I was getting some at 16. Getting yeah. some what? <coughs> getting some who? <laughs> you were getting pussy at 16? Yeah, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, man. Why? Why? Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to ask them. Why did you do that? It was probably a dare on their part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I can relate on that one because I feel like anytime I've ever gotten pussy has been like there's been like a pussy dare. Yeah. You was, feel like Ashton Kutcher's gonna put your <laughs> yeah. the Ashton Kutcher of pussy is gonna yeah. burst into the room to tell me I just got got. Yeah, I think for, in my situation it was just a group of girls playing seven minutes in hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. C- congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I stay giving my wife seven seconds of purgatory. <laughs> All right, dude, so 19, 6, 1955, he's 16. He is skeeting up his sheets left and right. Gross. It is gross, but yeah. you do that when you're 16. It's natural. Yeah, it's disgusting, but it is natural. Grab so a he's tissue or an oven mitt, something to put it in. They don't have tissues around the house then. Jake, think about how many tissues you would go through if you cleaned up your cum every time you came when you're that age. I have a monthly supply of clean <laughs> Come to the house when I was that age. Let's just put it this way. I plant 50 trees a year. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't feel guilty. <laughs> Dude, his mom is at war with him for coming in his sheets constantly. And I back her up on this because she demands that he does his own laundry yes. just because of how disgusting his shit is. You should want to yeah. do your own laundry. Right, yeah. Point. yeah. Yeah. I did not when I was that age. But I get that a normal person probably should. Uh, were you making... Mommy, wash your stiff socks? I wasn't coming in socks. Okay. You were not coming in your clothes at all? I was coming in the bathtub like a dirt ball. Yeah. It doesn't go down easy. I can't jerk off while wet. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard, man. It's I don't weird, like that's it. It's weird because you're always sweating. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I just got done coming <laughs> jake how are you with coming wet ah uh, man i don't like it yeah i'm like a trained seal <laughs> i need to be on dry land somebody needs to bounce a ball off my nose and then i can come all right so i feel like his mother's justified in asking him to do his laundry <laughs> yeah uh because i wouldn't want to do this cummy sheets anyway but dude he starts uh, developing a fantasy at this time where he wants to capture women. He's indulging it enough as to where there's a hillside that he digs out of space that would fit a person in there. Jesus, like a body. Yeah, like a like, like an he, actual person could he's fit. He's building there. a grave already. Yep. Or whoa, 30 pe- pairs of high heels. Could have been his excuse. Why would you bury high heels? You grow a high heel tree. <laughs> <laughs> So his perversions are going to escalate at this point. There's a local girl whose underwear he steals. He calls her up one day and he says, uh, I have your underwear and if you want them back, you can come get them. You got to come to my house. This dumb bitch goes to his house to get her underwear back. Jerry answers the door as Jerry. And he's like, yeah, just go sit down. I got to go check on something real quick. Say what you're going to say, Furman. As you said, as Jerry. As Jerry. Okay. Because uh, there's going to be a little bit of a little bit of uh, fuzzy identity coming up here. Mr. Doubtfire. Change. Yeah, he's going to Mr. Doubtfire. He's Mr. Doubtfiring right now. He is. No, this would still be Mr. Doubtfire. Hello. (laughs) Keep going. Oh no! That's Mr. Bull. I hit the spring. Oh my. My yams, they're on fire. Oh, my Lord. It's a drive-by fruiting. Keep going. Drive-by. That's all I have. That's all. No, keep going. That's all I like to say about that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So Jerry convinces this girl to come over to retrieve her underwear. 
She comes into the fucking house and he's like, yeah, just go have a seat. I'll be right with you. While she's standing alone in the house, fucking Jerry runs outside. He's got a mask that he has to put on, runs outside, gets a mask and a knife, holds her at knife point, comes back into the house. He's masked. He's got a knife. And he's like, you're going to do what I say. And he start takes, starts taking pictures of this woman. Is she like Jerry or she thinks it's somebody else? I don't think she knows what the fuck's going on. Because if you're a woman, I thought it was a, a classmate. What? I thought the it was a local girl he took the panties from. It was. Yeah. You said woman. You so said he, woman. Oh, pardon me, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this fucking T Rex. I'm just worried that you're starting to call teenagers women. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very yeah good. I'm trying to catch good it before point, it John. becomes a problem. Good point. <laughs> that is just looking out for you. Buddy. Just like the that group of uh, 96 <laughs> gymnastics women team that they had. Uh, uh, Jake, I was a child too at that time. <laughs> the posters are still up, Mike. It's um, they're ruined. <laughs> but dude, uh, he invites this poor girl in. Comes in, masked, holding her at knife point to take pictures of her. Right. Not like professional headshots. <laughs> like <laughs> bad stuff. You you mean bad stuff? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not. John, tell him what kind of bad stuff I'm talking about. What kind of bad stuff, John? I'm talking pee pee stuff. Oh. Poo poo stuff. Oh no. Duty. Duty. What else? Am I on the right path? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can see him getting hard. <laughs> hey, you remember those hypercolor t-shirts to change color as your body temperature changes? Oh, God. We should get Jake hypercolor underwear. <laughs> and clear pants. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, uh, my mood would be very horny all the time. <laughs> all right, so eventually he tells her, he's like, all right, you can beat it. And he's like, just give me a minute. So he runs outside, he takes the mask off, and he comes back in as Jerry. He's like, what the hell are you doing? And she's like, uh, I just want to go home. He's like, did the guy with the knife come in here and, and scare you too? <laughs> she's like, yeah. He's like, he kept me in the barn for like the last 20 minutes. She's like, all right, man, I just want to go home. So eventually he's like, yeah, go home. I don't This is a crazy day. Watch out for Mr. Knife Guy. <laughs> 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 Fucking crazy. She gets her underwear back. Thank God. <laughs> You didn't think he was going to give it back to her, Jake? You know, I thought at that point he was just like, well, I guess you should probably leave it. It could be evidence. <laughs> Do you think uh, she was on to him? I don't know. I can imagine that that situation was so terrifying that she probably just wanted to get the fuck out of there. No police report was made, I think, for that reason. Okay, this was reported later. It was never reported. Oh, this is, he told the story later? He did, yeah. Okay. So in 1956, this is the first thing that he gets in trouble for. He's driving. He lures a 17-year-old into his car. Um, he drives her out to a barn, and he doesn't go inside the barn, thankfully, because he's outside the barn with this poor girl. He's beating her, and while he's beating her, a couple's driving past, and they're able to save this girl. He gets arrested. They realize, like, he's fucked up. Instead of sending him to jail, they send him to Oregon State Hospital, which was also the uh, setting for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Really? It was. <clears throat> At least they didn't send him to a Steve Madden store. <laughs> <laughs> Three years of stocking <laughs> the back room at, at Aldo. <laughs> Could you imagine if like, he was like trying to, like, if he didn't have a mask, he's like, all right, I guess I'll put on a pair of stockings. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze. Stop coming. <laughs> Knock it off. So he does nine months in the hospital. 1959 rolls along. He gets out for a while. He's dicking around. 1959 rolls around. He joins the army, Jake. Doesn't really do anything exceptional. He makes it out of the army. Um, actually gets kicked out. Why do you think he gets kicked out? Because he loves feet. There's a lot to do with it. And they kick him with a foot. That's where I was trying to go. With it. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, no, I, I, you the, you got I it. I got it. It was funny. I didn't. You went over your fucking stupid head. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, 
What did he get booted for? For being crazy. Because he started to vocalize a fantasy that he was developing, which was to imprison a Korean woman. Jesus Christ. Jake, you want to handle this impression for us? <laughs> nope. Nope. I'll, I'll handle the impression of the drill sergeant. You want to do what? <laughs> He goes to he goes to an army chap. You want to wear your bunkmate's boot as a gas mask? <laughs> <laughs> Private, I can't allow that. <laughs> Private, I can't make that public. Yeah. <laughs> he goes to the army chaplain and he starts saying all this crazy shit about imprisoning Korean ladies. Jeez. And the chaplain's like, "All right, I got to pass this up the chain of command." Which is it's got to be pretty fucked up to pass that along in 1959. Is the Korean War happening at that time? I don't fucking know, man. Yeah, I think so. That would be a useful yeah. information for this. Uh, <laughs> at the time, it was the Korean War. Now it's the Korean conflict. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Why do they refer to it as a conflict? I don't know. Pork Chop Hill. It's a book. Yeah. I didn't read it. I bought it. You ate it. Yeah, I ate it. <laughs> I thought, too, it, was, I thought it was a meal. Much. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry, No, it's Jake. fine. Let's write it down in my John mind. ate it. <laughs> I don't know why the hell you'd say that about me. <laughs> <laughs> so he's referred to the army psychiatrist who's like, all right, this is too fucked up. We got to let you go. They discharge him. He goes back to his parents' house, and he's so nutty to the, at this point where they're like, look, you can't stay in the fucking house, but you do have to stay in the shed. Was he, was he still, like, in his fatigues? Was he, like, happy to be kicked out, or was he, like... I, I bet he was bummed because if you're that hard for Korean ladies and it's like a, a buffet if what, he's over there. What, do you think he was bummed because of the Korean ladies thing or was it because he confused the term foot soldiers? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they could have used that to an advantage. It's like, all right, he wants to go over and capture Koreans. That's kind of what we're doing. If we can just change it to men... And he can right. maybe well, be I, an asset. I like where you're going. You know? They should have given him a chance. Mm -hmm. I can <laughs> they should have sent his ass over there. All right, so he goes home. He's living in his parents' shed. And at this point, he's full-on weirdo mode. One day... Oh, yeah, the guy in the shed's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, the adult man in the shed <laughs> is a little bit strange, Jake. Yeah. You ever lived in a shed? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you for assuming so. No, this one would. Me? Yeah. No, th this one. <laughs> <laughs> would or has? Both. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> he notices a local woman walking down the street near his shed, and he starts following her. Unfortunately, he tracks her down. He strangles her. Not to death but he strangles her to the point of unconsciousness and steals her shoes. At least start with asking nicely. You probably could get them. Yeah. I think if a man asked you for his for your shoes, you'd probably give them up without... I'd be like, this guy's going to fucking strangle me if I don't give mm -hmm. him my goddamn shoes. Did he think he killed her? I don't know. Okay. Were the shoes his size? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because uh, there's there's no mention of him wearing them, but there is mention of him taking them home and sleeping with them. Jesus Christ, man. This is what year? This is 1959. Man, could you imagine if he just held out like 20 more years, seeing all those shoes sewn on telephone poles? That guy would have got electrocuted by 1981. <laughs> John, he does end up getting electrocuted. What? Holy shit. <laughs> From trying to do that? Trying I'm to rescue shoes? No, not for that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking incredible. That would be nuts. Now, after this, uh, this another shoe incident, he ends up becoming an engineer at a radio station. You're just going to gloss over the second shoe incident? Yeah. <laughs> He fucking slept with them. What, do you want to hear me say he fucked them, John? Well, dude, how did he acquire these shoes? Did he fucking beat the lady, strangled her. A second lady? Well, this was another foot incident. Okay. I've already mentioned a bunch of other foot incidents. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I was fucking confused. Sorry I smoked pot all day and I get confused. <laughs> and I'm sorry, this is just my... Yeah. <laughs> I have no excuse. This is my natural brain. <laughs> Brother, I'm retarded, so you're in good company. Man. I... I have a uh, Sudoku book 
that sits with dust on it in my home because I'm totally defeated that I couldn't get past the easy section. <laughs> Sudoku, is, is, are those those little poems, those three-line poems? No. Oh. They're kind of word, or, or fucking number poems. So the foot thing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Garfield right now. <laughs> <laughs> he could use some lasagna. I'll take sure. some. Yeah. <laughs> he hates podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> he loves lasagna. <laughs> Get this, Jake. In 1962, so that would make him 22, he falls in love Ooh. with a real sick bitch by the name of Darcy Metzler. By huge feet. Yes, yeah, size 12 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Real mongo. <laughs> you ever been with a lady with big feet? I think so, yeah. What's big for a woman? Size 10 or above? 11? Uh, I would say when you suck on her toes, <laughs> you feel it in your chest. Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, that was a haiku. <laughs> um, <laughs> I look at a, uh, a man with a size nine or below He's as really, having petite feet. You're really All arguing right, this, this question. It was a simple question, a yes or no. Uh, and you're arguing this What time. was the question? Do you date ladies with diving boards as feet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, these are my girlfriend's shoes. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Meg Luganis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you trying to peg my anus. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you shoehorn that in there. All right, good night, everyone. Jake, what about you? You ever been with a big bitch with big feet? No, no, no. You want to be? No. <laughs> no, I don't. That's something you never really hear too much about. I mean, every now and again, like, one of your buddies will let loose something that you didn't know about him, but you never really hear a gentleman say, like, man, I just love big-ass boats. <laughs> I like a foot job that makes my dick disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about a bitch that has magician for you. <laughs> Trying to play peekaboo. <laughs> I'm trying to unlearn object permanence with this bitch. <laughs> Where'd my dick go? Oh. <laughs> Is it ignorant to assume that all women with large feet are, are good swimmers? No, I think that I think that's a safe tracks. assumption. That tracks. I th I think it's fair to assume that. No, I, I wouldn't say that. So I'm not even gonna put it out of my mouth. What, the foot? You want to write it down? No. <laughs> I want to forget the last 20 seconds ever even happened. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so fucking Darcy Metzler, who I'm not keen about, brings fucking Jerry around to her parents, and they don't like him. You're on the foot pervert side. In this I'm not on anybody's side. Okay. I'm on the side of fucking Pickway, brother. It's a shoe store. No, it's not. It is. That's where you skim my sneakers. When did it go out of business? Yeah. Probably 1987. <laughs> Her parents don't like him. She's like, fuck it. This is the man I'm going to be with. I'm, I want to I wanna wear these shoes out, you know, till the fucking, till John starts buying another dumb sweatshirt. You said you liked it. I did. It looked fucking stupid, though. On you. <laughs> They end up getting married. They have a daughter. All right? Jake, they're initially in California. They move to Portland, Oregon. They have a daughter. Closer to Bigfoot. The, the, big the wife or location? Location. Oh, that's nice. Are you making that up right now? No, I'm dead serious. Pacific John, Northwest. Is he making fun of me? No, the PNW is where Bigfoot lives. What does PNW mean? Pacific, Pacific Northwest. Northwest. All right. I feel like I'm being tricked right now. <laughs> p and it's an off-brand of DSW. <laughs> it's the kind of women I'm into. <laughs> Any P&Ws want to chat? <laughs> Piglet Natural. <laughs> Jake, I don't know if you saw this, if we're in the same community group. Jake and I live in the same neighborhood, but somebody in a community group that's relative to our location posted an ad today asking if any BBWs want to have lunch sometime soon. <laughs> a truly insane place to post that. Because it's normally dedicated to like fucking trash is issues yeah. or loose pets. dogs yeah. or occasionally a body found. I mean, dude, when Craigslist doesn't dude. get you laid, 
you got to go to your local Facebook community group and try to filter out the exact kind of woman that you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Look for the filters. <laughs> It is kind of nuts that he offered to take them to lunch because that's going to be a very expensive date. Mm. Yeah, right? No, but I, I will give him this. Lunch is a better option if you're taking out big bitches than dinner. Why? Because they're more likely to fuck after lunch? Because lunch is cheaper, dickhead. <laughs> All right. well, I mean, you ever been to a fucking restaurant in your life? They're going to Golden Corral. That's 30 bucks a plate. After tips, 70 bucks? I don't that's... know, brother. You're taking a big bitch out to eat. I take her to Silver Corral. <laughs> It's less than gold. I know. So I spend less. Do you understand how dating works? <laughs> it's all you can eat. Have buddy. you ever dated a fatso? <laughs> Have you? No. What's the biggest woman you've dated? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Should I look at the camera and say her name? <laughs> Say your address instead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Tonnage. Annette, Annette Rainey. You... <laughs> That's my mother's name. <laughs> Damn. And she was a big old bitch until she got stomach cancer. Then she lost all that ass. <laughs> And that's what I'm into. That you know, th <laughs> <laughs> that's the fucked up thing about cancer is it just doesn't take lives. Sometimes it takes big old fat white asses. <laughs> My mother, man, God rest her ass, man. <laughs> she, <laughs> she used to have such a a fucking fat butt, and then she lost it all. That sounds like a good a good thing and a healthy. Yeah, thing. well, I don't know. What's that saying? I I'd rather be. Carried by eight because my ass is so fat and judged by 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> Such a shame, dude. You're still talking about a shame of your mother's ass. Brother, if you saw this thing, one of my, <laughs> one of my earliest memories oh, no. is of how striking my mother's figure was. In these royal blue plant pants that she had to wear for her job at a steak shop. I remember my father taking me to go maybe pick her up from work. She worked at... Damn. I think it was called Pat Steaks, but it's not the Pat Steaks that's in the city. This was in uh, Upper Darby. And they had to wear royal blue visors, white turtlenecks, and royal blue pants. <laughs> my mom's ass was so fat that like, when I saw her in these blue pants, I was just like... Is that even my mother? <laughs> I don't remember yeah. it ever being that big, but that is one of my lasting impressions as a child. And that ass, that those steaks. Yeah. Did you propose to your mom? I didn't. Did you ever slap her butt? No, but I used to wipe snot on it. <laughs> you never wipe boogies on ladies? As an adult, no. No, as a child. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah, when your mom's got an ass like that, you could... You were motorboating your mom's butt? Motor, I was wiping boogies, brother. Oh, man. He was motorboating. He was, I he was, was not. Wiping boogies as the excuse. No, I wasn't. To get in there. Nope. Yep. You a hound dog. Mm -mm. I want this part of the podcast to end. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get to the next part. Hey, brother, you spoke her name into existence. <laughs> I know. And I want to undo that. <laughs> you fucking stared right into the camera and said, Annette Rainey like it was Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> and now you got to deal with it. Lay in this big bitch's bed <laughs> that you made. <coughs> yeah, man. Man, that thing was big. <laughs> all the women in my family had massive asses for like, and it was such a shame because they all had them before big asses were in vogue. Have they all lost them? Uh, I've lost them. They're all dead except my mom. Well, it sounds like. The lack of ass saved her life. I guess that's a nice way to put it. I think it's as nice of a button as we're going to get for this part of the <laughs> <laughs> Did your Aunt Patsy have a big ass? Massive, dude. She was just a appliance of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what brand appliance? And this, this bitch was Maytag through and through. I knew you were going to say Maytag. <laughs> then why don't you fucking say it first? Because I Maytag her ass. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Y'all grow up with big bitches? Oh, nothing. Well, say it. I, I nothing even it. close to what you're describing. Yeah. yeah, you look like you got a little skinny ass, narrow <laughs> ass, fit through a fucking stuck window ass mom. I've got regular shaped people in my family. <laughs> Not me, brother. I'm full of clumps. <laughs> 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 I will say this, though. This is one thing that kind of bugs me about my family. I feel like we've always been at odds to one degree or another, and there was a point where they were all fat and I was thin, but now that I've gained weight, they've all got skinny. But you're not. You haven't fat. gained weight right now. Brother, like, I'm I'm too thick for my liking right now. You posted a picture of uh, a memory recently, and I was like, man, look at that chubbo when I saw it. Yeah. I've you look you, great now. I've seen you much fatter. Oh, uh, brother. Yeah. If you yeah. lost 20 pounds, you'd be too skinny. Oh, uh, John, you're being kind. I might grow my ass out for you. <laughs> I do need a big ass in my life, it sounds like. I don't think I was... I missed that experience growing up. It was nice, man. It's just everywhere I looked, they were... <laughs> I was be being hunted by Pog butt. It was like you were in a padded room. <laughs> I was in an ant padded room. <laughs> wobbity wobbity drop drop it like it's hot. He has been nonstop <laughs> sexualizing his mom and aunts yep. for the past 10 minutes. You have. You, I'm, you started this up. <laughs> It's got nothing to do with me at this point. It does, man. These these are rare. we lost a lot of big asses over the years. I might put together a slideshow for these butts. Will you, please? In in in, in bamorium. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I'll walk out. I'll, you ruined it, Jake. I know. Thanks. I was so close. We're talking about fat asses for fifteen minutes. Start struggling. No, that was good though, Jake. No, it wasn't. Don't give me that. All right. So back to our buddy Jerry Brudos. His wife gets pregnant. They've already had a daughter. She gets pregnant. They're having a son. He's very excited for this boy to come. I wish I didn't say it that way. <laughs> Jake, can you say those words? Nope. That was very gross. John, what you said. I would never. Make a boy come? <laughs> no shit. You don't have what it takes. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is me editing the podcast. Fuck you, I can make a boy come. Yeah, is that what you it. want me to say? Let's say it. I can make a boy come. Croydon, get in here. <laughs> Croydon? Croydon, I think. That's a town. Yeah, that's our studio boy. <laughs> He's going to come in here in Healy's and get sucked off by John to prove a point. He's 17, and I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they're about to have a little ass boy, and Jerry Brudos is super excited. He wants a son. Fucked up, man, because his mom didn't. Maybe that's why he wants one so bad. The day comes where fucking nasty ass Darcy Metzler is about to give birth to this little fucking Brudos, and she won't let him in the delivery room. Why? This is her second kid. Yeah. And she won't let him in the delivery she room. She will not let him in there. Why? I don't know. Just to be a little biatch. Is it because he won't take off his high heels? <laughs> and they're not allowed at hospital policy. Yeah, they didn't have like little scrubs to put on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she would not let him in the, in the delivery room. Huh. So he fucking, he freaks out. What do you think he does? Steals the baby. No. Something wild, though. I don't know. He takes off. He breaks into a home. He rapes a lady, and he steals her shoes. Jesus. Whoa. Yeah. I was not going to guess that. Hey, no shit. You're not smart enough to. Whoa. <laughs> that one hurt. <laughs> and that's why you can't make a boy come. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? He went back to the hospital and saw his kid? I guess, I guess he eventually he had to fucking pick him up, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. Eventually, he does go back. And, dude, get this. So... He uh he has some electrical training. He knows his way around uh, circuitry, if you know what I'm talking about. I, I do not. <clears throat> he becomes an electrician. On the job one day, he becomes electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> he gets promoted. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like he was saying he was going to become foreman. <laughs> he gets shocked. Uh, by his estimation, he says it was 480 volts. 
Uh, that would kill him, right? It'll get you, yeah. Now, it's funny you bring that up because I had no idea. So I looked it up and I found like a very funny Reddit thread of people who have been electrocuted. And there's some pretty fucked up ones where people are just like, yeah, the way they describe it sounds horrifying. One guy was like, I could feel it first in my brain. It was like a hum. And then I could feel it like throughout my body. I could feel the electricity come in and I could feel it like leave through my hand. And then there was one guy, anybody that would recount like a, a fucking fucked up electrocution, people would inevitably ask them like, how do you feel right now? What are the long lasting effects? One guy had a very funny one. He's like, I was electrocuted at work one day. At the time, I thought I was pretty fucked up. And a person responding was like, what about now? He's like, right now, he's like, I just don't like Pikachu anymore. <laughs> that guy sounds like a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any idea about whether that's a, a lot of... It's voltage? enough to kill you. It's enough to kill or you. Or yeah. 80 is enough yeah. to kill him. And I love the way you do your research. It's like you found the story. And I was like, what's it like to be electric? <laughs> oh, brother. And go down a Reddit rabbit hole. Brother, I stay on Reddit. Yeah. It's so hard not to comment on porno that I watch on Reddit. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be a hard thing to do. Well, it is hard constantly, and that's why I'm on Reddit watching porn, John. How many porn comments have you left in your... None. Oh. I don't. I, I have the fucking restraint of a muzzled pit bull. That's not... That doesn't sound like you have restraint. I'm being restrained. It sounds like someone put puts mittens on you when you're on these fucking... <laughs> Reddit sites, <laughs> so you can't type your opinion. He's banned. <laughs> Can you give us an example of what you want to comment on these videos? Yeah, good morning, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> good afternoon, beautiful. Good evening, beautiful. Oh my god. My condolences, beautiful. <laughs> Happy birthday, beautiful. <clears throat> I'm sorry for your loss, beautiful. <laughs> At least you got partial custody, beautiful. <laughs> it was a beautiful cat, beautiful. <laughs> All kinds of things, man. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of times it's just dudes being helpful. Like people will ask for like original sources of clips and guys will be like, yeah, I know that one. Go to here. Or asking for like a person in the video's name. I would like to ask that sometimes, but I don't. I have certain thresholds I don't cross. In porn? Yeah. What's that dude's name? You want to know the dude's name in the porn? He's trying to figure out guys in porn's name. Yeah, I get what you're trying to yeah. do here. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's a gay. You're on the, I'm going to find your account, Jake. I'm going to create one with your full name. Don't you dare. I already have one. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but fur is capitalized. <laughs> 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 I've only ever read uh, comments on a porno once, and it was because... They're kind of nice. Well, this one was because this woman was making eggs and it seemed like the heat wasn't even on. Oh, yeah. So she just eventually looked like she was stirring vomit in a pan while she was sucking this dude's dick. And I was like, people have to be talking about this. And yeah. boy, were they. Everybody was talking about the eggs. <laughs> the eggs became the like, star. Came to, like, came to come, but ended up throwing up or <laughs> and never want to eat eggs again. It was great. Judging by the fact that they were making breakfast, I'm guessing the actor was James Dean. Um, <laughs> Jimmy, it was Jimmy Dean. I know that the fucking <laughs> breakfast sausage is Jimmy Dean, but the porn actor is James Dean. I think Jimmy Dean would have been the better joke. It wouldn't work then. I think it would have worked better. James Dean's not a fucking breakfast. <laughs> What's exactly? You guys are watching Mike's brain break right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not breakfast. <laughs> I think the lady's name was Aunt Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never do anything for either of you ever again. <laughs> Fine, it was James fucking Dean. The joke sucked. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say for me? Nothing. Lay it on, buddy. Nope. nope. I know you got something good in there. Yeah, nothing. That fucking coconut. <laughs> it, this oh. this coconut has been drained. <laughs> All right, so we're getting through January of 1968, and this motherfucker's about to ramp his shit up. He's been electrocuted. He doesn't give a fuck anymore. Unfortunately, a 19-year-old woman is selling encyclopedias door-to-door -door at his house. She doesn't have any knowledge about what's about to happen to her, Jake. Jesus, Mike. <laughs> I wouldn't even think about joking because apparently my jokes suck. <laughs> I tried to make one of your jokes better. 
one fucking time, and this is what happens. <laughs> yeah, now look at you. I feel like shit now. Good. It serves you right. I just want to talk about my mother's fucking <laughs> asshole for 35 minutes, and I get shut down. And then you try to make a joke. I'm sorry. I won't say anything for the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just hide in that glorious sweatshirt of yours. Yeah, I'm just going to get in here and not do anything. I mean, I, I just want to talk about, like, the fact that... Oh, no. Mike, don't do this. I lost my mother's butt to cancer. All right, sometimes, like, you just... You think about... You think back to the good times where those cheeks are just seemingly filled with, like, pounds and pounds of cottage cheese. <laughs> Is that what you think butts are made of? Yeah, my mom's was. All right, and then just one day they're just not there anymore, and it's like you end up so many days where you just end up in the supermarket, and you're just grabbing old cantaloupes to try to recreate what your mom's butthole once was, and the guy knows what you're doing because he <laughs> lost his mom's butt to cancer too, so he doesn't say anything to you, but then his fucking manager's got to be a fucking dick, and he comes over. And he's like, you can't be grabbing melons like that. And it's just like, I can't do anything but fucking scream at him. And it's like, I'm, it's not about you. It's about, like, my mom's asshole. <laughs> and he doesn't understand what I'm saying. I just miss it so much. John, look what you've done. <sighs> look what you've done to this guy. All <sighs> I did was get him to admit that it wasn't just the shape of his mom's ass, but he actually got a good look at her asshole as well. <sighs> what is that? Was that a cry? <laughs> Was that a cry? Is that how you cry, it's Mike? It's starting to sound horny. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Dad Meat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where Tim went, but I'm just upset right now. All right. Will you show me a picture of your mom's ass today? Brother, If today, no. That, that wouldn't be right. Okay. Dude, it's like... Go on Reddit. Dude, it's like... It's like Somebody asking you to fucking show them footage of Doc Gooden and you show them a picture of him smoking crack today. Uh, that, now that's going over my head. <laughs> he he <laughs> used to be the best pitcher in the game and now he's a crackhead. Uh oh. So it wouldn't do my mother's butt justice if I showed you a picture of her butt today. That's a court TV show way that justice. happened. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Joan R Really Brown. <laughs> what do you think, John? I think it's great. Thank you. All right, I'm at peace with my mother's ass being gone. All right, I'm glad we went through all that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Little Brothers. <laughs> oh, do you get this? So, all right, so this poor door-to-door uh, -door, uh, encyclopedia sales lady comes up to the fucking wrong fucking house, and Jerry Bruder's just like, yeah, come on in. And uh, Jake, what do you think he does to her? I hope just buys the encyclopedias and lets her leave. I'm thinking that's not what happens. It's not. He lures her down to the basement. He cracks her with a two by four, and then he strangles her to death. How do you lure someone to like? Was it like a forceful lure, or, or was it like a? It's a door to door. Oh salesman. my! My bookshelf is in the basement. Exactly. You think uh, that fit down here? Let me show you. You know how many books there are. Anyway, what's this piece of wood doing in my hand? Oh, it's smacking you in the back of the fucking noggin. What he did, Jake, was the encyclopedias cost $89. He put $89 on a fish hook, shot it up the steps at her, reeled it in, and as she came down to come get the $89, he cracked her over the head with a two-by-four. That's not what I thought happened. Wow. And he strangled her to death. That wasn't the end of it, though, Jake. She's wearing high heels. Do you think if she was wearing flats, she would have been let off the hook? That was a good joke. It was good. That was really good. <laughs> yeah, Very back. disrespectful and to the were... victim, but that was really good. <laughs> you were smiling. You were frowning when I looked away and smiling <laughs> so big when I looked back at you. <laughs> I, w I was having a vision of my mother's ass in heaven. <laughs> Her ass is looking down on you right now, Mike. It is. Yeah. It's, it's got its own wings. <laughs> that thing got wings. <laughs> Do that, do that thing have eternal life, though. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Do that thing have unfinished business though? <laughs> <laughs> this really is. Really good podcast. <laughs> do that thing, but using a Ouija board to talk to loved ones though. <laughs> Oh, that's what we should do. We do have a Ouija board. I should see if I can talk to my mom's ass. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get like a, a cheek shaped fucking pendant oh, to put our man. hands on. Yeah, I wouldn't mind trying to contact your mom's ass either. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, now that I think about it, <clears throat> that's disrespectful. <laughs> Jake, please don't let him do this. Come on, John. Don't try let him do this. Try to stop me, Jake. I'll. Fuck you up. But dude, get this. So this is happening in his fucking house. Mm -hmm. In fucking Jerry Brutus' own fucking house, he commits this crime. He kills a lady in the fucking basement. All of his crimes occur either in the basement or his garage. His garage is fucking huge. It's probably about 60% of the size of his actual house. Whoa. Damn. Um... His wife doesn't fucking bother him. A lot of times his wife is fucking home when he's doing fucked up shit. So in addition to this woman that he cracked over the head and strangled, he sees that she's wearing high heels. He doesn't just take the heels. He cuts off her fucking left foot. Yikes. <sighs> Keeps the foot in the fucking freezer. And takes the high heels for himself. He hates encyclopedias. Yeah, it's just... He doesn't like them. Where... Did he keep? Did he have one freezer in the house? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I miss something? This thing threw up on the microphone. <laughs> I was trying to think of a joke. I couldn't think of anything. And then a, a burp slowly came. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! God. Oh my God! Isn't it crazy that that's what happens? But I can't think of a joke. <laughs> the brain's like, ah, uh, uh, let me find something. Here's a burp. <laughs> It's <laughs> a little bit of a burp. Yeah. <laughs> That's something. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <Yeah. laughs> Your little inside out brain is sending it out. Bodily functions. Go. <laughs> <laughs> we need a fart now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one's going to need a little throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Too much! Too much! <laughs> Pull back! Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, Dick. <laughs> oh, God, I miss it so much. <laughs> oh, dude, so get this. So during this time, in this area, he lives in an area of Oregon called Corvallis. And during this time, 12 women go missing. You with me? Yeah. You with me? Never left. That's 24 feet. Oh, thank you. That was so sweet of you. Damn. Oh, my God. All right, so during this time, 12 women go... <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. My, my brain went to the store. I just got back. <laughs> <laughs> he starts... Um, so the first body is the body of the um, encyclopedia saleswoman, Linda Slauson. After he's finished dismembering the body, uh, he throws what's left of it into the Long Tom River. <laughs> Come on, tell us the real river name. That's it. <laughs> no, it's not. It's Long Tom. Me love you, Long Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I found uh, I found a do rag on the playground in eighth grade, <coughs> and I wore it all recess. <laughs> And I called myself Long John, and I just kept saying, yeah, yeah. That's and pretty good. It was great. It was a great eighth grade bit. Put Did a, anybody get it? Put a tinfoil on my teeth, wore the do-rag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Get some shoe polish. Jesus <laughs> Christ. It was a guy. All right, I need a burp stat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he starts posing as a cop now. So we're getting into spring of 1969, John. So he's posing as a cop in the summer of love. Brother, uh, do you think as he's posing as a cop, he's also wearing women's shoes? <laughs> <laughs> he's posing as a cop, and he's like trying to like trick women into stopping just because he's dressed this way. And uh, unfortunately, he starts. he's doing the same thing with other women. He's luring them back to his house. I do, there's no way his wife didn't know. Yeah, it's... It, it's impossible to be bringing... You can't bring a woman that you don't kill back to the house. 
let alone one that you're in the garage murdering. Brother, I can't jack off to an episode of Two Broke Girls without my wife finding out. <laughs> yeah, sorry she had to get you blocked by Kat Dennings again. <laughs> During this time, so he starts dumping bodies left and right into this fucking river after he's had his way with him at home. There's a day in uh, May of 1969 where 50 feet apart, two separate bodies are found. How many feet? 50 feet. Okay. Oh my God, that's heaven. <laughs> Poor him. How many feet were on the bodies? <laughs> Three. All right, so get this. One of the bodies, all right, had the titties cut out. Oh, wow. Now, his wife questioned him because she found a titty in his workspace. What? She's like, what is this? He's like, oh, it's just a funny project I'm working on. A funny project. <laughs> <clears throat> that guy is not good on his feet. <laughs> oh, this yeah, is just part of a tool that I had to buy. Uh, for a project that's really very funny. <laughs> I ordered it from the back of a magazine. You ever heard of one? <laughs> but his wife finds a titty in his workspace. He explains it away. Eventually, it gets to the point where he's he's not going to back down. He eventually places this titty on their mantle inside their home. Holy cow. That was the project? Yeah. Ta-da. <laughs> Ta-da. What do you Ta-da. think? <laughs> they find this uh, detitied body in the river, Jake. And um, they pull it out, and they notice that um, the cavity where the titties used to be is just stuffed with paper towel, which to me is a real testament to the strength of these paper towels that they've soaked up that much river water. <laughs> yes, I agree. You would have used a lot less if it was bounty. <laughs> Um, that's, this is all fucked up. I didn't think it was going to go this far, and I didn't think you were going to fart in my face while I <laughs> said this sentence. Right, so they live, Corvallis is home to Oregon State University. So the next part of his pussyfoot grift is to start contacting the college, just randomly calling numbers, hoping that he gets a woman on the phone, and asking them out on blind dates. Jake. Unfortunately, this works sometimes. No. Yep. Where does he meet them? Fucking no Arby's. Was Arby's around back then? I don't know. <laughs> was, you took the words right out of my mouth. I thought I said that. <laughs> 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 All right, so, dude, get this. So, police are starting to become aware of uh, a probable location of where this guy's working out of, so they're, like, zeroing in. They're asking around the college if anybody has dated a guy who might fit a certain description because he's tried to kidnap women and numerous women have gotten away from him. So they have some defining characteristics to go on. Police are asking around and they just so happen to get a hold of one woman who has taken him up on this blind date offer. Don't you... I'm don't you dare laugh about I'm, this, No, Jake. I'm listening. This is serious business. We're both just listening. All right, I don't. I don't want you to do that anymore. I'm not doing a thing. I feel like every time I mention a victim, you do. I did Are not you doing that when I look. No, he, John, he makes the jerk off motion with his eyes. I do not every time I look with my back. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> See him saying bad things about Israel. I have not said a single. Well, the microphone's picking it up, Jake. No, no, it's not. It is. I'm telling yeah, you, the camera is. It is, dude. So get this. Um, earlier, um, I, I skipped over this, but in, I believe it was 1968, Thanksgiving of 1968, fucking Jerry and his family go away on a just, you know, a short trip for the weekend of Thanksgiving. During that time that they're away, he has one of his victims hanging from hooks in the garage. A drunk driver cr crashes into the fucking garage. The car goes into the fucking garage. Okay. The police come, they check it out. The police don't go far enough into the garage to see the area where the body is fucking hanging. What? So he comes home and he sees that his garage bit has been crashed into and he's like, all right, I'm fucked. 
but it's just a fucked garage. So like he calls the police to find out what the fuck happened. They're like, yeah, somebody crashed in your garage and you know, and, we locked him up. And yes, <laughs> yeah. there's no end. Like they just tell him who it was to crash into the fucking garage. And then, you know, I guess follow up on a fucking later on, but that's how close he was to getting found out. And I think that was 1968. Wow. Jesus Christ. I mean, that's not necessarily the cop's fault. They had no reason to investigate this man's home who was not home, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's like, that's just a weird fucking coincidence. <laughs> now, the garage does come back to haunt him because after the police are asking around... Because him, it's haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Look in the drawer. <laughs> They're able to get enough information from this lady who he went on two blind dates with from, Ar from Oregon State. Whoa, that lady needs to play the fucking lottery. Yeah, for Look. real, man. They eventually find out where he lives, and they have enough information from her to at least go to his house and question him. He's not there, but they're able to look into the garage, and he would always take pictures of his victims, and apparently they see pictures of fucked up shit, whether it's bodies that look like they're dead or severed limbs from in display from the outside of the fucking garage. That's enough for them to get a warrant. Yeah. So they're able to get a warrant, and on May 30th, 1969, they're able to arrest him. This is for um, an attempted abduction, which was for that lady that he went on two blind dates with at Oregon State. At that point, they're able to search his property a little more, ex property a little more extensively, and that's where they start finding more and more fucked up shit. He uses his phone call from jail to call his wife to ask her to burn all of his women's clothes that he has. That's what he's fucking worried about, mm -hmm. being outed as a cross-dresser? Well, I mean, it speaks to the testament of their relationship, that he's comfortable enough to call his wife and say, just burn all my lady shit. Also, that titty was not for a project. <laughs> 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 it, was, it, was for, it was from a project that I had just finished, actually. I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> so, he's arrested. He confesses to four murders. And then he's also charged with three counts of murder. Initially, he pleads, so he confesses to four, then he's charged with three additional ones. So that's he, seven. Right. And there's 12, 12 missing women. Missing. Yeah. Now, it's interesting. Wow, that, 12. 12 make up a foot. <gasps> this is crazy. 12 inches. Yeah. Which is a, a penis size. Which is three Del Calos. <laughs> Shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck, you got me. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit, that's pretty close. Brother, I am not just flaccid burps. <laughs> uh, he's he's also diagnosed with anti antisocial personality disorder, which explains a lot. What the heck's that about? You'll find out one day. <laughs> now get this shit. While he's arrested, he um, his wife is implicated by a neighbor saying that they once saw her carrying a body into the garage. Wow. What? Which that, that sounds untrue from what you've said. It just sounds like a bitch that hates her. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was a good opportunity to take advantage of that because eventually she does go to trial for that, but she's found not guilty. But she was guilty of not mowing her lawn. <laughs> just like some dumb bitch neighbor thing, you know. Just Some HOA bullshit? Yeah. You have an HOA? Oof, no. <laughs> Oof. I would be in jail for life <laughs> on violations. <laughs> I can't wait to see you in jail. Ah, uh, thank you. You're going to do so good there. Good or bad, depending on how you look at it. You'll be good. Yeah. I can picture you starting like an offshoot white gang. An offshoot white gang? Like an alternative to the Aryan Nation. What would my, what would be my hook? Uh, just the nice boys. <laughs> nice voice. You're so nice. You break. We don't fights. offer protection. We just all get, <laughs> just get attacked all the time. Yeah, I could see that. I could see. You that could that. set that up, Jake. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. You could probably easily set up getting your ass beat with your gang and Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have any trouble, I got a couple of phone calls. I oh, thank make. you. <laughs> so, in all said and done, he's eventually sentenced to three life sentences. Damn. Yeah. Got his ass. He did. On top of that, things get worse for him. Apparently, he gets beaten up a lot in jail. Oh, no. And a fun trick that seems to be that prisoners like to play on him is to throw buckets at him. 
Where the fuck are these guys getting so many buckets from? They have to clean the floors. Damn. And he's attacked with buckets. That's a weapon. I don't know, man. <laughs> Do the bu- are the buckets painful? I don't know. You tell me. They probably don't. I've never gotten hit by a bucket. Don't Jake. buy that. Now's the time. Mm. No, don't. That's why the bucket's been there the whole time. <laughs> and that uh, motherfucker's dead. You you just spoke of him in present tense. I do have some bad news. Oh, no. Uh, March 28th, 2006, he passes away. He lived a long time. Wow. Yeah, died he of a broken in- heart. <laughs> died listening to Buckethead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was old. Or, I mean, he was in jail for a long time. 37 years. It was Damn. the longest anybody had spent in prison in... Uh, in Oregon at the time. Damn. I mean, why become like a murderer? Like, if you're a foot pervert, just do what regular foot perverts do. Become like podiatrists. Like, don't kill people. <laughs> just go massage other people's feet, like in the mall, like a normal. Wow, Jack, I never thought of it like that. So, <laughs> ma- massage, mall, kiosk. Foot massages are foot perverts yes. and voyeurs because they like being watched while exactly. they do it. Exactly, yeah. That's like the ultimate pervert. I never yeah. realized every mall had so many damn perverts in it. <laughs> no, sh- no, no insurance accepted. <laughs> you think every doctor who has a uh, specialization is a pervert in that field? With feet stuff or like massage related? Just in anything. Like, yeah. I thought my wife's OBGYN was a pervert. That would track. Because the first time that we met him, he entered the room on a wheelie chair from the hallway. Anyone came in, oh, I'm doing one of those. <laughs> came in like Yogi Bear. Did he never stand up? He just looked at the pussy from the chair. I'm teasing. <laughs> He's like, do I smell a new patient? <laughs> no, he had me hold his ankles <laughs> while looking into my wife. <laughs> like he was doing a keg stand. He used the stirrups like a Superman pose. <laughs> To look at you, the vaginas. That's great. That's got to be so hard not to make jokes down there when you're that doctor. Oh, man. <laughs> what would you say? Jake, you're looking at my pussy. P.U. <laughs> Stinky. John, you're looking at my pussy. Hello. <laughs> oh, I can hear the ocean. <laughs> That's what I would do. Okay. I would yell in there and get a get a echo. It would be an echo based. I would joke. never come back for your cavernous oh, vagina. Mm-hmm. You know why it's big? Because you're gay as hell. That's why you have a big pussy. What do you think I'm putting in a pussy? Uh, gay stuff. Gnocchi. <laughs> 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 Damn, I've really wanted some gnocchi all week. I know, I know. I feel like I've been getting Has teased. Been we got to go on an outing. Just you said it right. Gnocchi. That's way qu- what you've made so much progress in last week. If only you did this with your Donald Duck impression. In gnocchi. Oh, all right, I'm back to in gnocchi. <laughs> Damn, Suck my dick, you. dude. <laughs> Suck my donkey. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else y'all be mispronouncing? Uh, wait. Can we? Was there anything else notable about him in jail besides getting hit with buckets till he died? No, he was getting his ass beat, getting regular ass beat, getting bucket beat. Was did you know like why he was such a prime suspect? Is it because classic? You're a woman murderer. We don't like you. I think that had a lot to do with it. Also, he was just a chubby little pussy. Yeah. Don't you fucking look at me, Mike. I'm sorry. That wasn't. I will fucking <laughs> take you down right here on the couch. I would never. I would, I don't you fucking... dare, Furman. Yeah. We can battle right here, yeah, brother. You fucking. Yeah. I'm ready, bro. Yeah, ready for what? Dinner? <laughs> I had dinner. I, you know what I had for dinner? <laughs> Gnocchi. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe you did not bring us any fucking Yonki and you had it tonight, you piece of shit. One Yonki each. Stop saying that. I was going to do it. A little on a toothpick? Yeah. You could have oh. us. Yunky. You know what else you could probably feed somebody on a toothpick? Replicas of my penis. Your actual fucking penis. <laughs> 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 They'd actually put it on display at Costco and people would be like, no thanks, I had to. <laughs> I already ate. I'll need that little ass dick. I can't, I can't see an outline of your little penis right now either. That's because it's tucked between my ass cheeks. <laughs> Mike, Mike's got a clapper. 
Mm, still not working. I watched a video today of a man being interviewed on the street, and they asked him what the most disgusting thing he's ever done was, and he said he sucked his own dick and came in his mouth. They pressed him further. He said, all right, second would be, my dick is so long that I was able to put it into my own asshole. Hard? I don't know. That's I did, impossible. There wasn't a third question. <laughs> I only allowed two questions. <laughs> now carry on. Uh, there was probably a time before my before my gooch grew out. What? I could have I could have touched my butthole with my penis head. Mm. Couldn't have inserted it. That's, Certainly that, not. That's good size, Dick. It's fine. I'm back on your side now. You, you got fucking healthy ass brajol. <sighs> Thanks. Man. Thank you. Am I pronouncing that right? I think so. But probably not, knowing you. Jake, what else can you do with your penis? Mine doesn't even reach the testicles. <laughs> yeah. But if you push the skin in far enough around it, never mind. It's, you know. I know all about that. Oh, yeah. I know all about pushing... Pushing skin, skin around your push penis. Skin. <laughs> push and skin. Push and skin. Push and skin. Any other penis ahead, boys in here? <laughs> Want to talk about birds? We are kind of lucky right now because the weather's been nice in Philly in the 50s. So yeah. we're getting a little bit of extra bird meat. That doesn't affect me. What? Mm -mm. That just means my uh, my casing around my penis is longer. <laughs> <laughs> Casey. <laughs> well, Jake, I don't know about you, yeah. but I got a little extra meat these days. Yeah, no, my dick's been in winter for 12 years. Oh, now. no. <laughs> Hibernating still. Still, you know, don't wake this giant. Yeah, next summer is the summer. 2023 That's is right. the, the year of the Jake dick. <laughs> it, it, it's making a comeback. Some placemats at Chinese restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I'd rather have the rat. <laughs> you had a rat uh. I think uh, my year is the year of the horse <laughs> No, for real <clears throat> 1978, baby Tiny penis horse No <laughs> I didn't say Shetland pony, I said horse <laughs> I thought it was Shetland pony uh, just, just last night Maybe today you thought of one? Mm -hmm. Was it? There was some horse talk. Oh, uh, Noah. Yeah, we were doing some horse talk yesterday, and mm. I have had a uh, a Shetland pony eat sausages out of my cooler at Azatig Island. Why do you do that? Because he was hungry. <laughs> Why does a horse eat anything? Because you put peanut butter in your dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I personally, I think we should nuke the horses. I hate them. Get rid of them. We don't eat them. Jake, what do you think? I love horses. What do you love about them? Oh, man. That they're hit by Mexicans? Hit how? Like with a car? You'd love my neighbors then. <laughs> you have Mexican horse-beating neighbors? I've been to your house. I've never seen these guys. They're out back. <laughs> <laughs> they got a little, uh, little welcome mat that says... We make this house a Home Depot. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You've never seen them? <laughs> <coughs> Man, there's so many times where we could end this show. <laughs> Should have just... This is like a bad relationship. Where it's like we love each other, but we're so hurtful. Should have moved out years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Should have moved into our parents' shed. Should have cut this off before the Home Depot joke, probably. <laughs> no, I like that joke a lot. I think that was a good one. It was solid. We got from Little Brothers to that. Full circle. Mm hmm Full Romeo circle. <laughs> we got to find some Little Brothers. You must have seen a shitload in Vegas. There were. That was the most midgets I've I've ever seen. Of every uh, ethnicity, the Brother, whole rainbow of midgets. You know how, like... Spectrum. Yeah, midget is a spectrum, because there's some where it's just like, you should be in the entertainment industry, and there's other ones like, you should not have been born. Oh, Jesus <laughs> oh my God. That's the most hurtful. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know if this counts as a midget, because it was normal person proportions. 
but like i mean small not like he was short at like five yeah. feet he was like four feet yeah but normal, but normal proportion brother i'm telling you it's a spectrum that's midget asperger's regular size cabbage yeah everything like it was wild it was like tom cruise it looked like a like i don't know fifth grader with a beard yeah, it was nuts. I cannot wait to see these midgets next year. Dude, they are... F I, I thought we didn't have them anymore. Like, I honestly forgot about midgets because it had been so long since I've seen them. But then I was out in a... Out of sight, out of mind. It is. <laughs> when we got to Vegas, I was mad the first night just because nothing was going right and I was hungry. And then I started walking down Fremont Street and it was like... You know how when you're a kid and you start thinking about heaven and you see, like, you envision, like, all your dead relatives and all your dead pets, like, walking toward you? That's what it felt like with me. Never had nope. ever thought of that. That's definitely not a thought I've had. <laughs> Mike's just greeted by his mom's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you can find a midget if you're ever, and it's a fun one. In Philly? It's right it's outside of Philly. How far out? Bristol, we we're just That's talking That's pretty about. good. Bristol Amish market. It's an Amish midget. No. Wow. Oh, He's there all the time. What is he, you wreck dog houses? No joke. They have they have like mini sheds that they sell. Oh my god! And uh, yeah, he hustles them, but it's probably like a mansion to that dude. Yeah, let's set it up. That, that motherfucker's oh, Amish. <laughs> <laughs> That's, do you think they're disappointed when they get one of them? They're like, all right, I guess he can work. <laughs> They just look at it at the production value instead. Yeah, of, they're just yeah. like, all right. I, I thought you were gonna say they ship them to the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the Amish have midgets, they're probably just like, all right. I guess he can make jams. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> they just have them running in there, <laughs> mashing up berries, <laughs> mm, churn margarine, maybe. They're too small for that. <laughs> Jake, what else could uh, Amish midgets do? Bird houses. Birdhouses would be a nice, mm -hmm. safe lane for them. Yeah, yeah, you know, maybe feed the feed the horses. Cattle. Oh, that's dangerous. You yeah. think so? A horse yeah. would eat them. Yeah, fucking <laughs> their goddamn arms the size of three apples. You turn into like a <laughs> Jurassic Park kind yeah. of moment. Just dude, <laughs> fucking full size Amish will go out to put a saddle on the horse and look at his mouth and see fucking shoes hanging out of it. <laughs> that's you don't want to go there with them because a, a, a normal sized horse cannot tell the difference. Between an apple and a midget. <laughs> ben, I think Ben Franklin said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Silence do good, actually. Yes, I, yeah. <laughs> that was his troll alias. <laughs> what about a uh, buggy mechanic? You know? Yeah, you can easily get on. Yeah. Right, you can... don't even have to get on your knees. You're just right at the wheels. Yeah. Crawl Probably underneath. horse uh, milker. <laughs> Milk the horse. Get I wouldn't the trust them around any big animal. True. Yeah, you get kicked to heaven. Yeah, because <laughs> that's got to be a great time time passer for a massive animal. You just see three horses fucking tossing this guy yeah. around, <laughs> playing soccer with. <laughs> just a, a meme with all the horses surrounding one little guy. Just <laughs> oh man, playing little football. They're going to be in heaven, too. They're going to greet you when you go to heaven? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. You think they have full-size wings in heaven? Who? I think, I think they have the largest ones. The horses. Yes. Peg yeah, TriStar. Whoa, yeah, you're right, yeah. What about uh, midget boys? They're <laughs> cherubs, aren't they? Oh, my God, Jake. Right? That makes sense. I mean, they are dense. They probably need a bigger... Wing casket. you'd think. Now, do you think when they die, they get kid caskets, or is there a special? You got to humor them and be like, oh, no, this is just a man, smaller man <laughs> casket. Meanwhile, it's got fucking Dora the Explorer all over it. I think they probably put two in one, and then one side's open for his service. It's a his and hers case. <laughs> Close it, the next family comes in, open the other side. It's like when you go to the Wells Fargo game, like uh, when they have Sixers games, they have the Sixers shit out, then when it goes to the Flyers, they just turn the cabinet around. <laughs> yep, that's probably it. Well, I think we've had this discussion here before. Midget caskets? I think you said they put them foot to foot. I just heel to heel. exactly what I said again. Nah, it's a little bit different. 
It's exactly. I, just you, said I you, think you referenced cat dog. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I was say, it was yeah. a cat dog. You put a new spin okay. on it. Yeah, new spin on an old classic. Here's midget cat dog caskets. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new spin on a midget casket. <laughs> we should we should make we should make one, and put a lot of marketing behind it just to see like what kind of interest we could drum up. Just a prototype. Hmm. Think we can get a bank loan for that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just try to get thirty yeah. keys from the bank. Hello, shark. <laughs> <laughs> How many caskets have you sold? We haven't even built our prototype yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be so sad when you're building it, knowing what's going in there. A midget? Yeah. I wouldn't be sad for that. You don't want them to live long? I want their pain to be over. <laughs> 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 yeah, they are like sick dogs. <laughs> they're like dogs with bad hips. No, they're not. They're great. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any midget fans. <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah. If you're a midget in the live chat and you can reach the keyboard, hit us with a comment right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get an adult to type it on the keyboard for you, let us know if you're out there. <laughs> the phone lines are open if you can reach that too. <laughs> have, have the cat knock it off the wall for you. <laughs> This is not right, guys. <laughs> oh, neither is God making them, but here we are. Man, they are. But for real, it was nice to know that they're still out there and, and uh, they're still in production. <laughs> I hope there's twice as many went this year when we go. I hope they multiply. They, they will. I My last night there, I got them all wet after midnight. <laughs> What if you go out there next time and you just get surrounded by little people who have heard you? I would let them overtake me. <laughs> it's kind of like when you're at, in like zombie movies where like they know they got like five bullets left, but there's like 5,000 zombies. And yeah. Like, come get it. Come eat my ass to <laughs> death. <laughs> got to be scary, though, because they're all bird height. You know, they're all bird munchers if they're in attack mode. <laughs> You think they climb up each other to get to your face? Oh, I don't want to think about that, Jake. <laughs> but you've thought about so many things. <laughs> Man. I mean, that's how they get into R-rated movies, right? <laughs> Man, to think I could have just stopped. Yeah. Recording that. I'm glad you kept going, buddy. <laughs> you, you made the right move. Oh. All right, boys. This was a lot of fun. Yes, <laughs> Go to hell uh, to the that per foot pervert Jerry was it Jerry Blavin? Uh, Jerry Sandusky. Jerry Sandusky, bad we got, guy. We gotta do him, man. Yeah, hell of a coach. Bad yeah. guy. He was. He died, right? No, no, he's still, he's still alive. He's Brother, I have uh, some uh, intel uh, on him. Yeah, he's still fucking. He's still giving hot tips every weekend for defense, he is. right? Yep, that's so crazy. Yeah, a, a friend of mine is a Penn State alum. And he has it on good authority that Jerry Sandusky still has influence within the football program and will often offer his insight. Who's giving this guy film? How's it getting game film? Uh, probably a pen. On the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he's, he's still scheming defensively. Well, you know what? Maybe we could... Get into jail and kill him. That would be good. That would make our hearts feel good. I'd go to jail for that. I think we'd be that would be fun. heroes. Dude, that's, that's actually one of my dreams. And I've told you this before about how I fantasize about assaulting Bill Cosby. You have. You, I do. Recently you told me that. That would be, if we could find a way to get locked up in these famous pedophile prisons. You know, he's a free man. Just I know he is. Okay, okay. Just making sure. I'm gonna, if, if I ever see Cosby in public, I'm going to... Hit him so hard that his jaw comes out of his face. What if he's at a show that you're performing on and he's really digging your stand up? I'm gonna fuck his butt up. <laughs> That's a long pause there. Yeah, mm -hmm. he hands you like a tag. <laughs> you're like, ah, man, I'm great. taking the tags off, brother. <laughs> but I would love to beat up an old pedophile, man. <laughs> well, was he a pedophile? I hope you get. Oh no, he was just a rapist. But you know, tomato, tomato. Yeah, I yeah. Think we should. I think we should beat them all up. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right, 
you take Sandusky, I'll take Cosby. Jake, what old uh, sex offender are you beating up? Who's left? Is there anyone left? Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Oh, I'll take Woody Allen. Then I'll stick his clarinet up his ass. What? Instead of R. Kelly? Yeah. He's R- middle aged, though. Yeah, R. Kelly could probably take me. <laughs> yeah, he's not, yeah. he's not old enough to take down Roman yet. Polanski? Yeah. Roman Polanski's That's a, good a good one. one. He's probably frail. Yeah, we got to put together an old, an old sex offender hit list. Yeah, give yeah. me something like an, on an easy level, like an entry yeah. level of beating up these sex offenders, and then I'll work my way up to, you know. I think I got it. Yeah, well, we need to get strong and beat these, <laughs> beat these old guys up. Mm-hmm. What if we got to jail and Sandusky the very first day was like, you boys got to try my toilet wine, and it was the best toilet wine you've ever had? Would you try it? Yeah, Jake. Just, just, I can't wait to drink again. Yeah, no sobriety in jail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're in jail, you're getting fucked up, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's like no zip codes. They're like, my wife's like sitting at home thinking like, he's in jail. Like, how much could he be getting fucked up? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, Jerry Sandusky's holding my hair back as I throw up into the toilet. <laughs> You're butt chugging. Still singing karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> We're singing the Penn State fight song. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Thanks to Penn State. Thanks to um, everybody that took down that Joe Paterno statue. Yeah, I would have liked to have uh, got a wrecking ball taking that thing down. Oh, maybe we could dig him up and um, spit in his bones. I would do that. Yeah. Is he just as guilty? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean... He didn't pork anybody, but... <clears throat> yeah. He allowed it to go on. Yeah. That's our bugaboo, Jake. You found it out. Damn. That's where we, unlike you, cross the line... <laughs> No, that's yes. where we draw the line. No, no, no. He's like crossing. Uh, that's where me and Jake draw the line. That's where you cross it. He cut it off. Fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening. Love you guys. Fucking Sandusky Cosby. You are fucked. We're coming for you. <laughs>